that was the moment when I felt that the work that I was doing was not really helping me or my co-workers understand what was happening. I was pretty much just sending people to prison. My name is Gabriela Sanchez, and I'm an assistant professor at the National Security Studies Institute at the University of Texas in El Paso. Ethics goes beyond looking into what's wrong or what's right. It's more of a philosophy that is informed from your experiences into what can affect or have an impact on the lives of others and on yours. The work that I do is primarily in study of transnational organized crime. And the areas that I focus my work on is the facilitation of border crossings, migrant smuggling. Uh, a few years back, I was offered a job going into detention facilities, into county jails, to talk with people who had been charged with um, migrant smuggling, being coyotes. Everybody told me that they were criminals, that they were horrible people that I had to stay away from. In fact, the guy who hired me told me, you're not going to last at this job because you're going to be dealing with criminals you know, who kill people. Once I got into the tension and I started talking with them, I started to notice that the people who were being charged, who were being arrested for smuggling, were actually not that different from my, my tios, my tias, the family that I had shared my life with. They were also migrants. Many times they were very poor people or they were people who were trying to get to a destination and so they had made an arrangement with the smuggler to work for him or her so that they could make it to a destination. I'm gonna tell you a story about a 66 year old lady that used to receive migrants at her little apartment. So one day, two young migrants came there along with the smugglers that were transporting them. They were, the migrants were very scared. They were very young. They didn't know what to do or what to expect. The smugglers were also very worried that the police could come and find them. And so they had weapons on them. The woman who was receiving them, the woman who was housing them, um, told the smugglers to get out of the house. The smugglers first looked at her funny, but then they ended up leaving. The migrants remember how this woman made them dinner. And then she stayed there with them. She made, she fixed two beds for them. And she didn't go to sleep herself until she was okay that the guys had calmed down. The next morning, fixed breakfast for them, made sure that they had enough money to make it to their next stop. They left. Somebody else came and picked them up and they, they moved on. The entire paperwork, you know, the, the court paperwork had her described her as the head of the, the operation. Mm -hmm. But then when you looked at the testimonies of all of the migrants, they would say, no, she welcomed us, she fed us, she made sure that we had a place to sleep, we took a shower, she fed us breakfast the next day, and we left. Mm -hmm. Migrants kept reporting how safe that had made them felt, how cared for that had made them felt. And she herself said um, during her testimony that she was doing that because she herself remembered how it had been like for her to cross the border many years ago without the help or the support of anybody. So she was trying to pay back what somebody else had done for her. That's how I got involved in the kind of research that I did. Mostly because I, I saw how everything that everybody was telling me really didn't match the evidence or what I was finding out from my interviews, the people that I was interviewing out on the street. I was in law enforcement for seven years. I was going pretty much every day to detention facilities. I was listening to cases of smugglers who had been violent. I was interviewing people who had actually experienced violence or aggressions, you know, migrants who had been abandoned in the desert. That was the moment when I felt that the work that I was doing was not really helping me or my coworkers understand what was happening. I was pretty much just sending people to prison. So I quit my job after seven years, and I went, to, I went back to school to get a PhD. Once I was at the university, I realized that nobody had actually known that kind of research. <laughs> that with the exception of another professor at a different university, who eventually became my mentor, nobody had looked at how um, smugglers or coyotes operating along the US-Mexico border. 
I travel around the world to talk with people about my experiences interviewing smuggling facilitators. I talk about the victimization of migrants. I write articles and books about how smugglers operate and what we can do to reduce the incidence of violence or exploitation. But that would have never happened if I hadn't had issues connected to how I felt about the, the, the ethical implications of working in law enforcement and not really being able to change the lives of the people.